Hi everybody, Steve Farmer here with continuing coverage of the 2012 U.S. Chess League. In this video we're looking at the week one matchup of Arizona versus LA. We're looking at board two here where Levon Altunian, rated 2493, is playing Zanovic Amanov. Zanovic is rated 2463. Now Lev is 37 years old and Zanovic is 23. So we have a case here of experience that should show through in this game. But they still make you play it. So Lev starts out with e4. I like to see that. e5, knight f3, knight c6, knight c3, knight f6. The four knights. d4, ed4, knight takes d4, bishop to b4, knight takes c6, b takes c6, bishop to d3, we're not going to have a whole lot of commentary on the opening here because it's main line stuff. Lev knows this stuff inside and out. D5, ED5, C takes D5. Yeah, Lev knows these positions inside and out, backwards and forwards. So I'm sure he didn't use much time in the opening here. He castled, black castled, bishop to G5, C6, queen F3. And now most common here is bishop to E7. And sometimes bishop to d6. I would personally prefer bishop to e7. In the game here, though, h6 was played. It's not a new move. It's just a, another choice. Bishop takes f6. Queen takes f6. Queen takes f6. G takes f6. Now, at 2463, Zanabek is no slouch. But still, weakening the kingside pawn structure like this against someone like Lev is playing with dynamite. Lev is the kind of player that seeks to get a positional edge in some kind of material imbalance. You know, the bishop knight versus two bishops, plus a weakness on the king side. He's good for another 10 miles. Lev plays knight to e2, bishop to d6, knight to d4, c5, knight f5, all still mainline theory. Bishop takes f5, bishop takes f5, and bishop to e5. Okay, so even though this is known in theory, that does not mean that it's a position that most people would like to play. You have to be some sort of sick puppy to really enjoy this position with either color. Though I suppose if I were playing white, I'd be a happier sick puppy than I would be for black. But it's basically an equal game. In the long run, I like white's chances, but I mean, bishop's the opposite color. Yeah, you can say white has a better pawn structure. This is true. But can white exploit the weak black pawns? That's the question. Rook A to B1. Rook A, B8, B3. Rook F to E8. Rook B to D1. Rook B to D8. And now Rook F to E1 is a novelty. Previously, though, here, Rook to D3 had been seen. And that ended up being a draw in 60 moves. And that was Krapovin at 2478 versus Baikov, who's 2451. It's from Moscow, 2010. But Lev's idea here, Rook Fe1, is a sensible one. It's a novelty, and I believe it's an improvement. I think it's better than Rook to D3. It's kind of scary because you can play Bishop C3, which he does. Rook to E3 and D4. Okay. Now, Lev exchanges on E8, but he could have played Rook to G3 check. But this really doesn't get anywhere. Black simply plays king to f8, and if rook to h3 to attack the pawn, he can bring the king back and defend it. No way to make any progress here. That's why Lev decided to trade on e8 with check. Rook takes and now bring the king in. Black really has no inroads to white's position. King to f8. Well, he'd have one inroad if white played rook to d3, but he's not going to do that. He plays g3. So now he can play rook to d3. Rook to e5, bishop to d3. King e8, bishop to c4. Rook to e7, a4. Rook to e5, king to g2. King e7, and now rook to d3. Okay, that was the idea of all these maneuvers. But it was also possible to play f4, rook to e3, and then king to h3 try and get active this way. But Lev's way is probably a little better. Rook to d3. Rook to e1, trying to infiltrate on his own. 
rook to f3, rook to c1. Now the door creaks open a bit for Lev. Um, bishop to d2 is probably a better move here, maintaining equality. But he didn't play that. He played rook to c1, bishop to d3, and now the idea is rook to f5. And he can attack the pawn on c5. And he has the possibility of swinging the rook to h5 and taking on h6. So Zanabek realizes that he slipped up somewhere here. And he decides to get as active as possible, which is what you want to do if you're going to go down a material. And he sees that he's possibly going to lose a pawn in this line. So he now plays c4, which is a good move. I think it's the only move. And after b takes c4, rook to a1, he's going to get the a pawn. Lev plays rook to f5. And now rook takes a4. And Lev plays rook to b5. This is a fine move. But I thought that Lev could actually really pile the pressure on black by playing rook to h5. But let's step back a moment and let's discuss responsibilities in team play. Now I have no idea at what time Lev came upon this position and what the status of the other boards were at this time. But it is an important factor in deciding whether to go after the H-pawn or not. Going after the H-pawn gives white some good winning chances. But it might well give black some winning chances as well. Now, if it was an all-or-nothing game, I think Lev would have played rook h5. So I am assuming that at the point that he reached this position, things were looking good on boards 1 and 3. We have already seen a draw on board 4, and that looked pretty even from move 1 to the very end. No disappointments in that game. That turned out the way it was supposed to. So if things are looking good on the first and third boards, and he's playing the second board, do you really need to risk anything? Or do you want to just keep a slight positional edge and keep pressing and pressing and pressing? Love's good at both. So I think that that is why he chose rook to b5 here. But for our own amusement here, let's take a look at rook to h5. Really not a whole lot of choice for black. If he wants to make a game of it, he's got to bring that rook over to the b-file so the a-pawn is free to move. And he has the ability to move the rook to give lateral defense to it. The h-pawn is lost, so rook to b4. Now, if white were to chicken out here, he could play rook to a5 and return to lines similar to what happened in the game. But we're interested in taking the pawn, grabbing the money, and running as fast as you can. So what happens here? Well, now there are a couple choices for black. a5 has to be considered seriously. But white can come and defend from the rear on this with rook to h8. Now if a4, rook to a8. This seems good for white. I'd have to say it's probably winning. That h-pawn is just going to fly up the board like a monster. All right, so let's look at rook to b8, trying to prevent white from getting behind the pawn. Well, now we go rook to h5. a5, protected by the bishop. White can play rook to b5 here. So we basically got the same thing, but white now has an extra pawn, and that h-pawn is a pass pawn. And if he trades, you get this little race going on. Black's got to stop that pawn. Uh, h4, you can't catch both of those pawns with your king. a3, bishop c4, stops black's a-pawn. King c6, now h5. King takes b6, h6. F5, the idea is he wants to push D3 and defend the promotion square, but Bishop to D3 stops that idea. Now A2, H7, A1 queen, H8 queen. All right. Keep this position in your mind. Hold it. Hold it. Visualize it from here. Is that winning? It's a lot to think about, and with that, you can understand why Lev may have chosen rook to b5 here. It's much safer, but let's go back to that position and discuss it. Okay, white's bishop is definitely better than black's. Same amount of pawns, and both sides have a queen. 
But some telling factors here. Both of those pawns are weak. The F2 and F7 pawns, not only are they doubled, they're isolated. Will not be easy to hang on to them. Black's king is more exposed than white's. Now, is this winning? I don't know, but I would not want to be black, and I would like to be white. Let's put it that way. Black has got a miserable defensive task ahead of him, whereas white has some opportunities to win the game. You're playing for two decisions here as white, and you're only playing for one decision here as black. You're not going to mate white, so you got to try and defend. Okay. So that's what happens after you go rook to h5 to go after the pawn. But back in our game, Lev played rook to b5, which is a logical move. Rook to b4, and now rook to a5, forcing rook to b7, and now rook to a6. Now, this is a nice commanding position for white. I think white is clearly better here. Material is even, and you got bishops opposite color, which make it kind of drawish, but you still have rooks on the board, so there's hope for going further for white. Rook to c7. Now, Love plays bishop to e4 here, but king to h3 popped into my mind when I saw this position the first time. Just trying to bring the king in immediately. Let's head up to take that h pawn or make his bishop get on a, a bad diagonal to try and defend it. But Love played bishop to e4 here, and I think around this point, Love offered a draw. So things on board one and three were mightily clear by this time. Zanovic played bishop to b4, declining the draw because he has to play on. Things were really looking bad on the other boards, so he had to try his best to win. And after bishop d5, bishop c5, king f3, bishop b6, king to g4, king to f8, f4, king to g7, king f5, rook to c8, and it's looking pretty clear where this game is headed h4, rook to c7, h5, rook to c8, rook to a1, rook to e8, bishop to e4, rook to c8, bishop to d5, rook to e8, bishop e4, rook to c8. And by repeating the moves, the players knew where this game was going to, and they agreed to a draw at this point. Very solid play by Lev. Now, in this final position, I like White's position. But is it really worth it to play on? No. Not given the match situation. And even if this was a must win for white, I'm not sure it can be done with totally accurate play by black. I'm not convinced of that. So, very nice game by Lev. And he shows that he's the consummate team player by keeping things in reserve, keeping his advantage, pressing and pressing and pressing, and seeing what his teammates are up to. And finally letting his opponent off with a draw in a difficult position at least. All right, folks, that's it for game two of week one, 2012 U.S. Chess League. At this point, we have draws on board two and four, where Arizona had white. We'll join the next video on board three, where Mark Ginsburg has the black pieces against Kavutsky. And then we'll look at Max game, where he has the black pieces against Matikosian. Both look to be very interesting games. So I hope you'll stay tuned for those. I am hoping I can get those done Sunday sometime so I can get them out quickly. All right, everybody, until next time, good luck.